Good morning. So we're going to start talking about 1.3.3, who's going the fastest. Some of these things you should probably write down and have in your notebook. Um, the first is this definition of angular motion. It is the motion of a body about a fixed point. So if we have this fixed point right here that's not moving, and we have this body, this thing, and it's moving about the fixed point. So let's assume it's moving at the same distance from the fixed point. And it's going around and around and around. And however far it goes, let's just say that this body or this thing just moved this far. Well, we could see that as an angle, a movement, angular motion. So it's how big is the angle that that body moved. And angular motion is used to describe the motion of planets, pendulums, and objects such as wheels. So very, very, very um, useful in today. It's generally measured in the change in the angle versus the change in time. And let's use delta for change. So the change in the angle, ooh, running out of room, over the change in time. So example, change in an angle could look like radians per second. Where radians is the change in the angle and the per second part, I guess I should put it like this, is the change in the time. And we could also be talking about revolutions. How many times does it revolve or go around per minute? And so we're going to start with 1-129. It says two runners are going to race around a circular track. One runner must run in the inside lane. The other must run in the outside lane. Mm, not exactly perfect, but you get the idea. And... The outside lane is 15 feet to the right of the runner on the inside track. So if we've got a person on this inside track running around, this outside lane is 15 feet from the runner on the inside track. The starting gun goes off and the runners take off, running at the exact same speed. Who wins the race? this person or this person explain your reasoning so if you've ever run um, on a track maybe around a football field normally and it's not usually circular it's usually more oval um, normally it's staggered like this runner in the first lane second lane third lane fourth lane. There's usually six, but I'm running out of room. So this person on the outside lane has to run the fast, the farthest because they're on the outside part. So they get to start ahead of the others. But then the finish lane, if I'm remembering right, the finish lane is the same for everybody. So they take care of the difference between the lengths of the track based on which lane you're in by staggering the starting points. So this person back here has the shortest distance to run, but they have to start further back. So in the end, they should, this staggering should take care of the difference between the circumferences of each of their tracks. But for us, for this example, our runners are starting even. And they're saying, who's going to win the race? Well, the person on the inside track will win the race because they don't have as far to run. 1-130. Um, a wheel is spinning at 500 revolutions per minute. So we have a wheel. And it is spinning 500 revolutions per minute. Oh, that's not, oh. So 
So you've got, here's where the wheel is stopped, and here it goes, it starts spinning. One revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions. It does that 500 times a minute, so it's really fast. Um, how many radians per second is this? So these are measures of angular speed that we just talked about. And you might equate this to one of those questions in science where you're going um, 500 miles or so many miles per hour and they want to know how many feet per second is it. So we're just doing some conversions of our units. So we're going to start out with 500 revolutions per minute, per one minute. And we want to change it to radians per one second. So let's start with the revolution first. What do we know about one revolution? All the way around the circle. We might know that it is 360 degrees all the way around the circle, but since we're trying to get to radians, we also know that one revolution is two pi radians. So we can do a conversion right now with revolutions, putting it on the denominator to make it cancel, and two pi radians on the top. Remember, radians doesn't have a unit. If there is no unit, it's understood to be in radians. So now we've gotten rid of revolutions, but we still have per minute and we want per second. Well, we also know that one minute is 60 seconds. So we'll put the minute in the numerator so it can divide out with the minute in our denominator. So minutes are gone and we get 500 times two pi times one. Well, that's a thousand pi over one times one times 60 seconds. Um, let's divide these both by 10 and 100 over 6. That is 50 pi over 3 seconds. 50 pi radians for 3 seconds. Okie dokie, let's try the next one. 1-131. One one. The laser that reads a DVD uses constant linear velocity. This means that the laser will read the DVD at the same rate no matter where on the DVD the information is stored. To maintain the constant velocity so that it's reading at the same rate, the DV DVD player changes the rate that the DVD spins. So the reader of the DVD is only allowed to read at this constant rate. But we know how a DVD is. Um, this material that's recorded out here is going to have to be spun at a different rate than this material that's recorded closer to the center. So the speed of the DVD player has to change so that the reader can keep reading at this nice constant rate. Um, to maintain the constant velocity, the DVD player changes the rate that the DVD spins. Um, when information is stored at the outermost track, a DVD spins at a rate of 200 RPMs, or rotations per minute. So when it's stored out here in the outermost track, it, I lost it, spins at a rate of 200 RPMs, or 200 rotations per minute. If the innermost track is two centimeters from the center, and the outermost track is 5.25 centimeters from the center. I don't know how to show this. I guess I'll just do this, 5.25 centimeters from the center. How many RPMs must the DVD spin 
to main at how many RPMs must the DVD spin at to maintain constant linear velocity when the laser is on the innermost track. Okay, so we're going to step through this one point at a time. So A part says, what does it mean to have constant linear velocity? Because it said that it uses constant linear velocity. Velocity is speed, and constant means the same. It doesn't change. So that means the speed doesn't change. So speed, if you think about miles per hour, It's the ratio of the distance and the time. Or you could do the rate equals D over T. Speed, the rate, the speed that we're going, is the ratio of distance per time. So that ratio doesn't change. It's constant. So um, there's A part. That's what constant linear velocity means. B part, will the DVD spin faster when the laser is on the inside track or on the outside track? Why? Will it spin faster when it's reading on the inside track or will it spin faster when it's reading on the outside track? So let's think about this. The reader, when it is focused on the inside track, I don't know what direction it goes, but it's reading at this constant speed. All the way around. Same thing for the outside track. It's got to read at this constant speed. So in order for it to read at this constant speed and it's in, on the center, does it make sense that it must go around more times to cover the same distance as the point on the outside? So if you could think about starting here and starting here, and reading around in this direction. So think about the distance covered here on the outside track compared to the dis that same distance covered on the inside track. So when it's on the inside, it's going to have to spin faster. The DVD has to go around more times on the inside track to cover the same distance. So it will be spinning faster on the inside. I'm not super conceptual, so this part is a little bit um, difficult for me. And if it is for you too, we can talk about it again on in class on Wednesday. All right, C part. How far does a point on the outside track travel in one rotation? So here we are on the outside track. How far do we travel on one rotation? So, how many centimeters per rotation are there? Would you agree that that's kind of a circumference idea? How far around the circle are we going? So we have c equals pi d, or we have this formula c equals 2 pi r, and we know Earlier in the problem, it said that our radius was 5.25 centimeters. So it's 2 pi times 5.25, which would be 10.5 pi. centimeters and then let's see they get that to 33 centimeters per rotation oh that's just if we approximated it 10.5 times pi approximately 35 33 centimeters per rotation all right next D part what is the constant velocity in centimeters per minute of a point on the outside track of the DVD? Okay, so in C part, we found that we were 33 centimeters per rotation. 
what's the constant velocity in centimeters per minute? So if we take that distance as rate times time, Oh, I see it now. We did see earlier in the problem that we were going, here it is, 200 rotations per minute. So if we want to find out what the velocity is in centimeters per minute, we can take our centimeters per rotation and multiply it by the 200 rotations per minute with the rotations canceling. Um, what's that, 6600 centimeters per minute. Okay, E part. How far does a point on the inside track travel in one rotation? Okay, let's look back at our picture. On the inside track, it had a radius of two centimeters. So we're talking about circumference again. So C equals two pi r. So it's two pi times our radius, which was two centimeters. So it's four pi centimeters or 12.566, I'm just going to say 12.6 centimeters per one rotation. That's how far we're going to travel on the inside track in one rotation. F part, how fast does the DVD need to spin when it's reading information from the inside track? if it needs to maintain the same velocity you calculated in part D. So if we need to maintain this velocity, how fast do we need to spin? Okay, so we're gonna take the circumference from E part. This is how far it needs to spin on the inside track. We wanna know how fast it needs to spin in order to maintain the same velocity. So we don't know how many rotations per minute. We, need, we know we need to multiply it by some speed in order to maintain the same um, constant velocity as we found in D part. Okay, so we need to figure out how many rotations per minute. So we could just divide both sides by 12, whoops, 12.6 centimeters per rotation. Divide this side also by 12.6 centimeters per rotation. So X rotations per minute equals 6,600 centimeters per minute divided by this and when we divide fractions when you divide two thirds divided by four fifths don't you keep the first and multiply by the reciprocal of the second so that's what we're going to do right here we're going to multiply by this reciprocal rotation over 12.6 centimeters this allows the centimeters to divide out and when you do the 6600 divided by the 12.6, you get approximately 5.5. All right, that wraps up this section, and I bet you are going to have some questions for me, and we can talk about them on Wednesday.